for the faculties of our academies of Cadiz, Cordoba, Jerez de la Frontera, and Porto de Santa Maria. Rome, June 8, 2003. This letter is written in the same context as the previous one. Thus are, Rita made her visit to the province of Andalusia in April, 2003. She had the chance to visit the academies and to meet with their administrations. This letter, directed to the faculties of the academies of Andalusia, gives us a taste of what was experienced in these meetings, joy, a loving educational climate that can be felt in our schools, also shares some desires in regard to this mission of ours, education in service of the gospel, including working to forge a true educational community and the reinforcement of pastoral ministry at all levels. The letter shows as well her concern for the financial administration of the centers. She finishes the letter by enumerating some of her educational dreams. Dear friends, I have such pleasant memories of my visits to the schools of the province of Andalusia, and now having returned to Rome, I want to contact each of your faculties through this letter. I want to thank you again for the meeting that I had with you in each of the schools, sharing about your projects and the concerns which are characteristic of committed educators today. How could I forget how happy it made me to see such a friendly spirit among your students, no doubt a reflection of the atmosphere that permeates the schools. How could I forget the patio in Cordoba, so full of color and life with the rhythm of the pasadables, and the tangalos and allegres of caddies? How can I describe my interview by the creative students of Porto, and the choir with its voices and flutes, and the charming students from Jerez dancing Sevillanas and Bulirias. Thank you, because I could tell that behind all this, there are great-hearted educators. At the end of my visit to the province, in Sevilla, I met with the director's staff of each of the four schools in order to assess the visit. It was they who encouraged me to write this letter so that you could be involved in what we shared during that afternoon. I told them clearly and with conviction that in the planning of the apostolic works and of the communities which the handmaids have in Spain, we have made an option for the educational centers. For us, the schools are very important platforms for living out the mission that St. Raphael received as a gift for the church and the world. And although we have other settings for education in service of the gospel, we know that this setting is significant because of the great number of children and youth whom we can reach in order to show them the face and the values of Jesus Christ. I will begin by telling you what I perceived when I visited you. I really enjoyed visiting the schools in Andalusia. What is common to all of them is that the students are happy. There is a joyful atmosphere. The children and youth want to come to school. They might not want to study, but they want to be there. I enjoyed the programs that you organized to welcome me, so full of color and warmth and humor, each school with its own personality. I have found united faculties, enthusiastic, interested, happy to be teachers in our schools, serious teachers who work in a professional manner. They are faculties that are interested in the students, faculties with a sense of belonging to the school, with a family spirit, and an even greater family, because of the links that you are creating with other handmade schools. You have concerns in regard to the education of today's students, discipline, lack of effort, the lack of perspective in regard to the future, low self-esteem, lack of motivation. All of this worries you, and you are trying to respond to this very complex situation. For this I congratulate you. I have seen in each center the care taken in regard to the pastoral ministry. In the smaller schools this seems easier. Furthermore, from each center you work with the family, although it is a challenge to form relationships with parents who do not come to meetings or gatherings. All this filled me with gratitude to the Lord, seeing so much dedication on the part of all of you, and I wish, in this second part of this letter, to share with you some of the hopes that I have in regard to our mission of education in the service of the gospel. 1. I want us to continue to take steps to create an educational community 
that everything done in the center be done as an educational community and not as the work of an individual. The handmaids want to live the new ecclesiology, this way of being a church of communion and participation. In the church there is a diversity of charisms, lay, religious, and clergy, with their respective calls. Today, wherever the church is working, it has to be through real communion among the charisms. If it is for us handmaids to make sure that the charismatic spirit of St. Raphaela continues in the schools, we know that we can do this only through and from the educational community, in a shared mission. This desire and conviction has to be incarnated in each center so that it becomes more than just a nice phrase. 2. I desire that the pastoral program be reinforced. I know that it is very difficult. I accept and understand this, but I also encourage you to do it. I want the pastoral program to permeate all areas of education and formation in the center, so that it may go beyond the occasional gestures or campaigns, and that among your topics of interest and reflection one of them be this, how to educate in service of the gospel. I want the students to have experiences of beautiful celebrations and meetings that spark enthusiasm, that the Eucharist may influence their lives. In a handmade educational center, Eucharistic celebration, prayer, and attitudes are never just an option, they are essential. 3. Always encouraging you to go further, I would like the parents to have an opportunity to share their abilities, to share from their knowledge and experience. This requires creativity on the part of the school in order to figure out how to generate this interest in the families, how to motivate them. 4. I want to make you aware of the economic situation that our centers are experiencing. Until now, they have been managing thanks to the help from the sisters who revert part of their salaries to the school. When there were many of us working in the school, there was enough for all. Today, we are fewer and the schools have to continue to think about how they are going to resolve the economic matter. It is necessary to look for solutions, because the subsidies from the agreements with the government are not enough to finance the kind of education that we want to give and are, in fact, currently offering. 5. There are still more hopes that I want to share with you. They are dreams for today's world that we educate in such a way that each student who graduates will have found a response to the question, what is the purpose of life? That we educate so that women may be respected in society. That we educate for peace and reconciliation. That we educate to create a social conscience and solidarity with the most disadvantaged. I leave you with this vast program. A short while ago we celebrated the feast of Saint Raphaela. May she grant us all the grace to go further, with enthusiasm and joy, as she counseled in one of her letters, as soon as you become joyful again, you will like everything, and you will look at the children specially, not as impertinent beings, which they are by nature, but with the interest with which one looks at something very precious, for each soul has cost the blood of God himself. Soon you will enjoy well-deserved vacations, May they be a time of grace with your family and a time to restore your energy for our shared mission. Affectionately, Rita Burley Education in Service of the Gospel in Asia Educational Centers Cuenca, August 2003 In August 2003, 
The second Latin American Conference on Education was held in Cuenca, Ecuador, in which a good number of lay participants joined sisters from across the continent. For this conference, Sister Rita prepared this talk about education in service of the gospel in Asia Educational Centers, which has two very distinct parts. In the first section, she explains at length how the Institute today understands education in service of the gospel in our schools. In the second section, she enumerates and details the constant characteristics of our educational mission, to draw close to the person of Jesus Christ, to cause new life to spring forth, to educate for commitment and for ecclesial identity. Introduction Thank you for the invitation to participate in this meeting and to say a few words about a topic that I am very passionate about, education in the service of the gospel, the apostolate of the handmaids of the sacred heart of Jesus. It gives me the opportunity to thank you for the work that you are doing as educators, handmaids and laity, here in Latin America, and I congratulate you for having organized this second meeting on education. The sisters and our teachers from other continents accompany you with their prayers. They are very interested in the fruit of your reflection. You ask me for some words that can shed light on the work of the ACA Educational Plan for Latin America. I understand that what you are preparing, which is the object of this meeting, the educational plan, is something like a declaration of principles or characteristics which are the basis of our educational mission. I accepted joyfully. Everything that I say to you today comes from my heart with the sole desire of encouraging the educational mission of the handmaids of Latin America and of contributing some insights to these days. I am firmly committed to the apostolate of education, and I strongly agree with the words of Father Peter Hans Kalvenbach. To renounce education in its various forms is to renounce evangelization of the world of the future. If, through the apostolate of education, the Church carries out the great mission of evangelization, that of proclaiming the good news that is Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, the education that we offer in our educational centers, formal and informal, is always a collaboration, an insertion into this mission of the Church. It is always the proclaiming of Jesus Christ, bringing the student and the entire educational community to Him, that, in a nutshell, is education in service of the gospel. Education in service of the gospel. Although perhaps it is not necessary, I want to remind you that the term education in the service of the gospel refers to the apostolic work characteristic of the Institute, and that together with the cult of the adoration of the presence of Christ, it is how we handmaids live out what is basic to our mission of reparation to the heart of Christ. We carry out education in service of the gospel through various ministries. One of these is the education and formation of children and youth. What we handmaids strive to do in dedicating ourselves to education in service of the gospel, in the style of St. Raphaela Maria, is very well summed up in number seven of the Constitutions. The characteristic apostolate of the Institute is education in the service of the gospel, this includes promoting human development, proclaiming the gospel, helping people to grow in faith, both as individuals and as members of a community. We carry on our work at different levels of this process, according to circumstances, always keeping in mind the aim of our apostolic endeavor, that each person may be enabled to make a personal commitment to Christ within the Church. We carry out this task by means of Minus education and formation of children and young people. Minus welcoming individuals or groups who come for the spiritual exercises or for prayer, reflection, meetings. Minus pastoral work in parishes, leading and taking part in various movements and groups, pastoral work with families and individuals and other work according to the needs of the church in different times and places and which are in keeping with our mission. I am going to limit myself to the educational centers, formal and informal, because trying to cover all the apostolic sectors in one educational plan would dilute important aspects, 
and it could end up as something too broad and vague. I think that an educational plan is addressed to teachers, parents and students so that when they come to us they can learn about the kind of education that they are going to receive. An educational plan has to present the basic points of the educational commitment that all parties assume, educators, students and parents. Education in service of the gospel in an educational center. On speaking of the kind of education that she wished to offer to the students of her time, St. Raphaela Maria did not use the expression found in number seven of the constitutions, but it is easy to recognize in her writing and even more so in her choices in regard to foundations, the principles of education that they embody. She was convinced of the importance of Christian education in the society of her time, in the formation of persons capable of explaining their faith and of living it with a growing maturity in a rapidly changing society. For this reason, from the beginning, the handmaids dedicated themselves especially to education, taking care about education in the faith and providing the student with a comprehensive formation. Raphaela Maria was a woman of one great desire, that all may know and love him, Jesus Christ. She felt that the most suitable way to do this was to make Christ available for the adoration of the people and to dedicate her new institute to the apostolate of Christian education so that all might come to know Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and to discover the immense and personal love of God, Lord and Savior. I don't doubt that Raphaela intuited that the Christian education offered by the Institute had to be an incarnated education, that is, one focused on the person in the context of his or her own situation, in his or her religious, ecclesial, cultural and social political environment. In order to promote Christian education, she always encouraged the sisters to give the best of themselves in the classes, whether it be in manual arts, humanities or religion, based upon hope in a God who accompanies us in this educational work and who calls all of us to be sons and daughters through the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. This goal guided and sustained her, and her experience of Jesus in the Eucharist enlightened her. We have already stated some principles that must be included in an educational plan of the handmaids in Latin America. The education that we offer. Minus is a means to carry out education in service of the gospel. Minus includes human development, the proclamation of the gospel, help to grow in faith. Minus is guided by the goal of helping people commit themselves to Christ in a community within the church. This does not mean that every center can offer or accomplish the same thing in regard to the commitment to Christ in the church. Minus contemplates the person in his or her own situation while it opens him her to the greatness of his her vocation in Christ. Minus requires us to look with hope. In Christ it is always possible to grow, to develop. It is always possible to dream and to build a better world, one that is more fraternal and just. Minus is motivated by communion with Christ in the mystery of redemption and therefore has a pedagogy of the heart, of mercy, of tenderness. Minus is illuminated by the full participation in the Eucharistic mystery and consequently has a Eucharistic pedagogy. I am happy to see that your project for a plan presents the principles of our mission and underlines the requisite that education begin from the complex reality of the person. Nevertheless, I think that this meeting will help you to amplify some aspects and clarify others. The Educational Centers Today There is no doubt that the handmaids are diversifying the means to carry out the apostolate of education in service of the gospel. By this we do not want to communicate the idea that today the centers, formal and informal, have less importance for us than before. By no means, I am convinced of their importance. The last general congregations, in the dialogue charism world, have been confirming the importance of education in today's world and renewing our commitment in this field. 
During these past years, I have had the opportunity to travel a great deal through different countries and to have personal experience of different contexts. I am more and more convinced of the importance of education, and that this education must be an education in service of the gospel, which means evangelization understood as education of persons in the fullness of truth, Christ. When I approach the countries most affected by poverty, I feel strongly the need for education for children and youth. Without educated people, how can a country raise itself up? How can it improve its quality of life? What hope can it have for the future? When I approach the countries that are apparently wealthier, I feel the need to look for how to transmit the faith to the younger generations, how to proclaim Jesus in a postmodern, consumerist, fragmented world. The school and the university are privileged platforms to reach them and their family environments. I am aware that today there are two realities, poverty and wealth, in every country, whether it be labeled developed or in process of development, and I am happy to see how networks of solidarity are being built among the centers of the handmaids in the same country. There is also an ever-growing solidarity through international links among the handmaids centers. This experience shows that by sharing this way, we all end up benefiting. It is an evangelical sign. There are no winners or losers, no, we all benefit be it on the level of development or the level of proclaiming the gospel or in the growth in faith, all come closer to the realization of the new person in Christ. The presence of an educational center in any situation, no matter how difficult and poor it may be, creates hope and generates positive energy and life that gradually transforms it. I share an example of the center in Naga, Philippines. We are present in a barrio on the outskirts of the city, where we have a center for the education of children and one for adults. The educational presence benefits the people, changing lives of families and bringing progress to the barrio. A few years ago, in the barrio, there were conflicts with powerful businesses and authorities who sought to expel the people from that zone. However, they were able to resolve this through dialogue, and they were heard. The barrio is improving, and the next generation will have a better future. The education offered has given them not only resources to analyze their situation, to know to whom to report it, to know how to organize themselves, etc., but also to know how to act from a gospel stance, in dialogue, from the perspective of truth, looking for the best for the barrio. All this generates hope in the people, and although the difficulties might not disappear, there is strength and conviction to go on. Furthermore, this barrio has generated a current of solidarity, first from Japan and now from Spain, who wish come resources that maintain the quality education in the center. This also generates hope in those abroad, because they grow in the sense of brotherhood and sisterhood, and in their responsibility in regard to the basic needs of these brothers and sisters, and in the people of Naga, because they are conscious of their dignity. All have acquired gospel values through which they live and progress in their own environment. Likewise in Mpambu, a barrio in Kinshasa, Congo, we have a kindergarten as part of a program for undernourished children and a social center for adults. These centers are generating life and hope in these people who suffer so much due to war and political corruption. We have others here in Latin America, Tior, Guayquil, Cerro Navia, etc., and in general our involvement within the great educational network of Fi Y Alegria in Latin America. Within Fi Y Alegria, we are collaborating in order to bring education to places where the people have fewer resources, in conflict zones. At the same time, we are involving the inhabitants of the area in the educational project. Moreover, Fi Y Alegria is respected by the national governments as an institution to which they pay attention. As an organization it is influencing governments to take seriously their political commitment to education, so that the right of the citizens to education, or that the motto, education for all, agreed upon by our politicians in their summit meetings, may not remain mere words. 
I could mention other examples, many of them from Latin America. Perhaps it would be good for you to share among yourselves the grace that you experience, the fruit of your endeavors in education in service of the gospel in your centers. Today, we handmaids feel strongly that in our centers we must educate and prepare responsible citizens for tomorrow, people capable and motivated to contribute to building a local and global society which is more just and fraternal in all its dimensions. The education which we offer has to form consistent persons who know who they are and what life is for, free persons who are not deterrent by their lot in life, by the opinions of others, by their own weakness, or by what others decide for them. Persons with a critical sense, who know how to detect and reject the selfishness which impregnates many of the structures of our society, but also know how to discover and appreciate the goodness and the truth of the situation in which they live. Persons aware of their need to continue learning and maturing throughout their lives, aware that there is always much more to learn. Our education should leave the person with a healthy understanding about what excellence and efficiency are, and what their purpose is. We have the ethical obligation to offer in our centers an excellent and efficacious academic education. We have the commitment to transmit the values of Jesus Christ and to initiate the students into a personal relationship with him, which will ensure that the gift of an excellent and efficacious education, which they have received, will be put to the service of building a better world. Truly it is a great gift with which to serve humanity today, to be educators and keepers of the mission of education in service of the gospel. From this mission we understand that educating is repairing and evangelizing. With education in service of the gospel, according to the style of Saint Raphaela Maria, we work for the transformation of the world through transformation of the heart of the person. Today globalization and violence are phenomena in which education can make a great difference. In regard to globalization, in spite of its negative aspects, we find positive aspects which education can develop. One of these is that whatever happens in one part of the planet arises interest and involvement in all parts. Education can transmit values that reinforce this positive aspect of globalization for the good of humanity. The effort which is made in the educational centers to give priority to educating for respect for human rights creating a culture of peace in order to make it possible to live from the stance of reconciliation etc., will render fruit as new generations grow up with this way of understanding reality, open to the world and feeling that each person is a human being whose life is very worthwhile, and who is too valuable to be despised, assaulted or killed. Furthermore, in our world today we experience a generalized climate of violence that hinders life and peace. Peace is necessary for people's progress, and therefore the reconciliation that makes peace possible is an urgent need for humanity today. To work for peace based on the gospel values of forgiveness, reconciliation and justice is a challenge for those who believe in Jesus Christ and proclaim him. The best contribution to work actively in conflict resolution to avoid violence is to educate in order to rebuild the dignity of the human person to educate for reconciliation, and to create a culture of peace, important aspects in education in service of the gospel. As educators we have this great challenge. How can we educate for peace? How can we form our students to be people who are reconciled and reconcilers, people in solidarity and future builders of peace and justice? Characteristics or constants of our mission of education to educate is to bring the person close to Jesus Christ. I repeat that education, which the handmaids and those who collaborate with them seek to provide is in service of the gospel, that is, from the vision of faith we want to make explicit in our educational work at this consistency of the person whom we educate, of whom we were speaking a moment ago, the freedom and the healthy critical sense to which we want to open him are based in Jesus. 
This is how we have reaffirmed it in the last general congregation. The final and definitive response to the cries of humanity is and always will be the person of Jesus, who tells us clearly, I have come that they may have life and life in abundance. To educate is to make new life grow. I understand that to educate is to discover the good, the grace, the seed of new life that there is in each person, and to make it grow. I believe that this is what we read in the chapter about the apostolic mission in the Constitutions, work to bring about the birth of the new man in Christ. To educate is to form for commitment. To educate in service of the gospel is to establish the true dignity of the man, the woman, in his her development in the faith in God the Father, in Jesus the Savior, and in the Church, that all may know Jesus as Savior. The person needs to know that he is loved. He needs to know that life has meaning. With this style of education, we make it possible for our students to come to know Jesus Christ, and in this way we empower them to become responsible citizens for the other, for all but particularly the poor, to become Christians who can create a society shaped by justice, by mercy, and by charity. We want to help them to discover their own vocation in the world and in the church. The aim of our apostolic endeavor is that each person a be enabled to make a personal commitment to Christ within the church. Education to be church to think with the church. I have stated that our apostolate of education in service of the gospel is inserted in the great mission of the church. In St. Raphael and Maria we have the testimony of how to love the church in order to be able to identify with it. We are church part of this people of saints and sinners, by means of her we have received the gospel, the Eucharist and the other sacraments. The church, that of the first community and of twenty centuries later, is the church of today, the real one, the one that exists, the one that entrusts to us the mission of evangelization. There have always been difficulties in the experience of church, and there are difficulties today. As educators in its name, we have to continue to go deeper into our faith, our belief that the Spirit dwells in the Church, and to continue tuning our ears to His Word in order to grasp His teaching, for never will He abandon it, and to be valiant in searching for the way to speak our truth in a manner that does not wound, that is, always humbly. To educate in order to think with the Church is not only to educate and form our attitude to the hierarchical Church, it is also to educate in order to live one church, the communion of charisms, with responsibility. To educate in order to identify with the church is to educate in order to take an active part in its life, in the liturgy and in its pastoral projects. To educate to think with the church is to assure that tomorrow we will be able to count on persons capable of dialogue, in any situation, from the everyday dialogue to interreligious dialogue, the more capacity for dialogue the Church has, the more it will be an instrument of the peace of Christ. And we are Church. With all that I have been sharing, you will understand that the handmaids are committed to an education that minus works toward the development of the person in both the individual and social dimensions, a formation that focuses on the person and liberates him her. Minus endeavors to form persons who are open to pluralism, builders of peace and reconciliation, to promote the culture of peace in our centers is a challenge for our educational style, a culture of peace that should permeate the atmosphere of the school so that the students can grow in the conviction that each one can be a builder of that peace, that the life of the school may foster actions and words that build peace, that dialogue may be the means of overcoming the inevitable conflicts that arise in any living situation, a dialogue that opens the door to forgiveness and to reconciliation. Minus inspires reflection, with a critical sense, on the currents of thought that move the world today, and from there, questions us about the ways of thinking and of being that we want to transmit. 
Minus promotes justice and love, solidarity with the poor and the weak, and does not collaborate with any kind of injustice. Minus fosters in the school whatever promotes communion, as a need which arises from the desire to live the Eucharist. Minus is open to altruism and gratitude in a world characterized by efficiency and profitability and power. Minus seeks quality, excellence, in what it does and for what it prepares, always in a way that does not crush or exclude. As General Congregation 17 tells us, today, because of the urgency of the situation, we feel called to put certain pastoral accents into our work of education in service of the gospel. Minus to work in family ministry, offering a human and spiritual formation, in order to fill the vacuum of values and foster reconciliation. Minus to commit to women, to educate them so that they can discover and experience their own gifts, to take charge of their own lives, and to educate men so that they will keep in mind the dignity of women so that both, from the first years of life, may grow in a balanced environment, learning mutual respect for one another. Minus to foster commitment in a way that has an impact on the lives of the poorest and most excluded, and contributes to changing unjust structures through gospel attitudes and behavior. The values of our educational proposal continue to gestate in the structure of the school, and in this way we understand the pastoral program of the educational centers as something that impacts the entire life of the center. This must be a shared task for all the educators. It requires an educational community as the terrain where it can develop. The Educators in order to live out education in service of the gospel in the style of St. Raphael and Maria, there must be educators who live their mission with a generous heart, whose demands are made with gentleness and firmness, who regard their students with tenderness and patience, especially those who deserve special attention, because they have greater difficulty or need. St. Raphael saw that we could do this, I being very united with the heart of Jesus. Us we will make it possible for the students to know Jesus and become responsible citizens, Christians committed to creating a better society. Today, the handmaids throughout the world share with the laity a mission of education in service of the gospel. To share the mission with the laity is to generate life and energy. As I have already stated, it is an experience of church, of communion of charism's religious life and lay life working diligently in the same educational mission and united by the same spirituality, that of St. Raphael and Maria. I am filled with gratitude when I see that by means of education we continue to make real and visible the desire of St. Raphael and Maria that all might know and love him, and that they may acknowledge him as Savior and Lord, and her passion for being more very much more concerned about the interests of Jesus in all their extension. We have a great challenge before us. How can we help ourselves to keep our ACI identity alive in our educational centers throughout the world in order to promote forgiveness, reconciliation, justice and peace, and to proclaim Jesus Christ to the world? I think that an educational plan can be a good instrument. 